Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aaron Gill and welcome to 100 Stories Deep. Uh, today I'm going to be reading a story from this book, I'm With the Bears. Uh, it's an anthology of short stories all concerning um, the climate crisis. And today the story I'm going to be reading is one called Hermie by Nathaniel Rich. And I've chosen this story because, um, uh, well, I think it's pretty fun type of storytelling. We've got a talking crab, um, and also it really illustrates the point between um, people who try to um, figure out uh, figure out the climate crisis through academia and the limits of academia. Um, so this is Hermie by Nathaniel Rich. Vermin. Heights. Thunderstorms. Airplanes. Wide open spaces. Commitment. They don't get to me. Not at all. But public speaking is another thing altogether. The introduction to marine biology lecture I give to my freshmen every year is enough to rattle me. So you can imagine how I felt in the moments before my, before my speech at the 18th International Conference of Limnology and Oceanology in Salzburg this year. Fortunately, I have developed a practice that has served me well in these moments. Fifteen minutes before I go on, I make a trip to the restroom, where I wash my hands and recite several passages from the paper I am to deliver. Then, I close my eyes and repeat to myself, like a mantra, three words. Calm blue ocean. Calm blue ocean. Calm blue ocean. When I open my eyes, well, I may still have the flutters, but I'm as ready as I've e I'm ever going to be. So, as Arnie Lundfeld was coming to the end of his discussion of organochlorine contamination of the Bering Sea's stellar sea lion population, I, quite, I quietly exited the conference room and made my way to the head. I've always found the restrooms at Sheraton Hotels to be consistently clean, well attended and capricious. I've observed this to be true in Lyon, San Diego, Toronto and even Hanoi, the third annual Polycate Conference, a few years back. The Salzburg bathroom was no exception. The mirrors were unsmudged. There were no puddles around the urinals and the bank of the three sinks was a pure white porcelain. I say this only to emphasise how quickly and with what a sense of shock I noticed, perched to the rim of the middle sink, I giant Coentobia Soliopotus, that is to say, a hermit crab. I didn't recognise him at first, perhaps it was because he had changed his shell. Gone was the Biscuit Spiritum I remembered so well, a perfect pear, pear whelk with alternating bands of burnt orange and nacre, polished to the tide to a delicate glow, its long tapering stem its tight spiral apex and the open fold revealing a darker orange interior, an elegant if compact home. In its place was a filthy, unwieldy, carbuncled husk, to which there clung small bits of wet garbage and sea gunk. On closer examination it was clear that two common shells sorry, on closer examination it was clear that two common shells, one dark brown and the other a dreary shade of green, had been roughly fused together. There is no scientific term for such a monstrosity. From the shell's opening there emerged two cautious antennae testing the air. Then several furry claws, bronzed by age, tapped the white counter with their hardened pincers. With a sudden display of agility, the animal pivoted, scraping his shell against the porcelain. His black beady eyes fixed directly on mine. I gasped. Hello, old friend. The voice was hoarse, scratchy. I glanced around the bathroom. I even ducked down and looked for the feet in the stalls, but I knew it was pointless. I was the only person there. Ah, so you don't recognise me. I stared at the hermit crab. His claws were drawn up beneath his shell, folded like the legs of a kneeling child. I'm sorry. I said. I kept looking around, but to be honest, I was just trying to buy myself some time. The voice was coming inside the shell. 
I don't blame you, said the hermit crab. One of his antennae gestured behind him towards the mirror. I can't even recognise myself. I just... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Hermie. I couldn't believe it. I know, I don't look the same or sound the same. But a lot of years have passed since our summers in Sorostota. You don't look the same either, by the way. That was true. The last time I had seen him, I was roughly four feet tall. My voice hadn't yet broken, and I had yet to lose my baby fat. Now I had a full beard. Do you remember, said Hermie, the dunes of the Siesta Key on Turtle Beach? I grinned, despite myself. How could I forget? It's just, well, like, it's just, it's been a long time. So you do remember our days from the shore? Yeah, sure I do. In fact, I now study coastal regions for a living. That's the reason I'm here, in Salzburg. What about the King's Castle? I smiled at the memory. The King's Castle, I said. I forgot that we called it that. It took, the whole it took the whole afternoon to construct because I only had that little red pail with the broken handle. But by the end we had a battlement, an arcaded pavilion, even a gatehouse. Yes. And remember the high tower where you, where you put my throne and the water slide that you pushed me down into the moat and... He trailed off as that long ago day in the sun seemed to wash over him. Well, it's good to see you, Hermie. There was an awkward silence. What about the man buried alive? I said. Ha! said the crab. That was a good one. I was always a little bit scared first, but then I would dig my way out. Well, except for that one time. <laughs> well, that was not fair. Putting the pail over the sand, I assumed it was night and that you had left me behind. Oh, I didn't keep you under too long. As soon as I heard your claws scratching against the plastic, I let you out. I think you might have waited a few minutes. I could hear you cackling. But then you set me three free and I loved you all the same. That was one of our best adventures. I smiled at the memory. There are also the seaweed salads that you made for me, said Hermie, laughing. <laughs> With sea salt dressing. You had quite an appetite. Hermie squealed. <laughs> it was delicious. No wonder why you had to find yourself a new shell. <laughs> Hermie's laughter stopped. That's not the reason I have a new shell. No, I said. Oh, oh, of course it's not. <laughs> Turtle Beach. It's completely gone. I'm sorry to hear that. They tore it up. Exploded the beach and inserted columns. They put an apartment building much too close to the water. This was some time after you'd left. I see. Then the hurricanes came. They got worse and worse. They swallowed up the beaches whole. His voice got very quiet. Why did you stop coming to Turtle Beach? Anyway, where did you go? I don't know, I said. But of course I did. I just couldn't bear to tell him the truth. I didn't stop coming to Turtle Beach. Well, at least not at first. I just stopped visiting Hermie. My mother explained to me that ten-year-old boys were too old to play with talking hermit crabs or any other imaginary friends. A few years later, I went off to boarding school and then to college. I never returned to Sarosta. Can't you just pick up and move to another beach? I asked. I tried. First to Venice, then to KCC, then Manasota. The whole key is disappearing. Everywhere there is sticky water. Sharp, unnatural pebbles and invisible seaweed that tastes awful. I'm actually working on this very issue. The sustainability of coastal environments. Erosion, rising sea levels. The title of my talk today is in fact Differential Seed and Seedling Predication by Conotopia Impacts on Coastal Composition. Hermie didn't know how to respond. I have no place to go, old friend. I started to wonder how Hermie could have got into the bathroom in the first place. The windows were sealed. It was too large to enter through the sink drains or the urinal. And how did he get from Sarasota to Salzburg? What about the rest of the old gang, I said. The Stella, the Starfish, Ernie the, the um, Urchin, Gulliver. They're dead. Long ago. Every last one of them. Clammy and all of her daughters too. I found Clammy myself. 
her show. It's too horrible to say. His voice cracked. Her, uh, her shell had turned green. She had been poisoned. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Hermie prepped himself up with his claws, a gesture that appeared to require heavy physical exertion, a gesture of supplication. Do you remember how we would bob in the sea? He asked. How you would hold me in the palm of your hand, and when a wave went over your head, you would lift me above the surface into the air. I nodded, but I didn't know how to respond. With a quick motion, I couldn't help myself. I checked the time on my cell phone. There were only five minutes before my speech. I'm sorry to say this, but I have to give my talk presently. I wondered, said Hermie, his ancient voice animated by a, an irrational optimism. Have you found us a new place? Excuse me? I, I, I don't know what you mean. A new home. A safe, clean home where we could play in the sea forever. I, 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 I don't know what to say. Look, I, I live in Philadelphia now with my wife and young daughter. A daughter? How old is she? She's three, I said. I didn't like this line of conversation. Does she love hermit crabs and other sea creatures? She's never been to the ocean. Hermes' antennas lowered to the counter slowly with an incalculable sadness. Maybe I could live with you. His voice was small and frail. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's just that, well, my wife, my wife's allergic to, to shellfish. My, I hope he wasn't considering serving me to her, after all we've been through together. No, of course not. I just, I just didn't mean to imply. Just think of all the fun adventures we'd have. Your daughter could join us if you like. Really, I wouldn't mind. We could go again in search of Dum Dum Tree. Remember the Dum Dum Tree? First of all, there's no way airport security will let you through. He stared at me, his eyes fixed like black little stones. But I realised he couldn't possibly be crying. There's no tear ducts on a, on a hermit crab's eye stalk. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Hermie. He didn't speak for some time. His knuckles scraped against the white counter as if he were trying to dig a hole in the porcelain. I glanced again at my phone. Two minutes left. I, I have to go. Old friend. Hermes' voice was resigned, stiff, feeble. Before you leave, can you just do me a single favour? My stomach dropped. What is it? Can you carry me to the toilet? It took a long time for me to crawl over here. It was difficult to climb up the sink. I don't know how I might possibly get down again. I could fall. My shell is fragile. Of course, the toilet, that was how we got here. The explanation relieved me, I suppose, in the initial surprise of seeing Hermie again. I'd momentarily lost my ability to think logically. Delicately, I picked up Hermie. His shell was beaded with moisture, and it gave off a faint metallic scent, like a flaked rust. He withdrew his claws, claws as so as not to scrape the skin of my palm. He was surprisingly light as if his shell was filled with nothing more than air. I opened the door of the nearest stall and bent down next to the toilet. On the seat here is fine, he said. Thank you. I rested him there. One last thing, he said. When I sink to the bottom, would you be so kind as to flush? I nodded. Bye, Hermie. Shakily, he raised one of his claws in valediction. Then, he pivoted himself and, with a shove, pushed himself over the rim. The water splashed up. Hermie sunk to the bottom of the bowl. I looked at him one last time, then I flushed. The force of the jets lifted him. In that moment, there was something about the colours of a shell. As he spun around the bowl, that brought back with sudden clarity to King's Castle and Man Buried Alive, Ernie in Clammy, and the Dum Dum Tree, and the Kaleidoscope Fountain. I was back on Turtle Beach, holding my red plastic pail, my feet breaded with the fine yellow sand in the rush of the tide, powerful in my ears, the sun hot on my face. Then it was gone. I lowered the lid. It seemed like the right thing to do. If I could just say so myself, I, I think the paper was a success.
I might even just submit it to the hydrobiology review. I didn't even feel nervous when I delivered it. There were nearly 25 people in attendance and later at the cocktail hour, no less than four of them offered me their compliments. So that was Hermie by Nathaniel Rich as part of the anthology I'm With The Bears. Um, yeah, a quite a, a amusing with a talking crab, but also quite a sad story about the decimation of coastal life uh, and the different experiences or the different relationships to someone who experiences something and somebody who studies something, you know. Um, so, yeah, I... I maybe just want to ask you if well, you know what are the, what's the nearest coast to you um did you ever used to go there when you was a kid what's the difference between um between it then and and between it now um yeah i mean just just don't forget your history don't forget your past don't forget your experiences and always trust and look out for the people who are directly um impacted by those experiences Cool, uh, yeah, my name's been Aaron Gill. Well, it hasn't been Aaron Gill, it's still Aaron Gill. Um, and thanks for listening to the, today's story. Um, click subscribe to listen to the rest of the stories in the series. Um, subscribe to our socials to, to catch up. And um, until next time, stay safe.